Graph Convolutional Filters are the tool of choice for the linear processing of graph signals. Given a graph shift operator S and a possibly infinite set of coefficients HK, a graph filter is defined as a polynomial on the shift operator with coefficients HK, or a series if you want to be precise when the number of coefficients is infinite. The resulting graph filter is a matrix that we denote by H of S. Applying the filter to a graph signal X entails multiplication of the signal with a graph filter H of S to produce the output signal Y. We group the coefficients HK in a sequence we call H. We then say that Y is the graph convolution of the filter H with the graph signal X, we use the familiar convolution notation, annotated with a sub-index S, to indicate the use of the shift operator in its definition. Perspicacious listeners may have noticed the appearance of the diffusion sequence in the definition of graph convolutional filters. They will therefore not be surprised to see us highlighting the fact that graph convolutions aggregate information growing from local neighborhoods into global neighborhoods, which as we have said several times already, is an important property of convolutions. To revisit this important point, consider a graph signal X supported on a graph with shift operator S, along with a filter H with coefficients HK. The filter contains K taps from 0 to k minus 1. For this given signal, graph and filter, we undertake the computation of the output of the convolution of H with X on the graph S. We begin with an illustration of the graph on which the signal components are supported on individual nodes. To compute the output of the graph convolution, we begin with the graph signal X itself which we scale with coefficient h0. We highlight the signal value at node 4. To the signal x, we add the diffusion s times x, which we scale with coefficient h1. This results in the convolution output at node 4 being affected by all of its one-hop neighbors. To the resulting sum, we add the product of s raised to the power of 2 with x scaled by coefficient h2. This represents a diffusion of the diffused signal. Adding this term to the convolution results in the value at node 4 being affected by all of its two hop neighbors. We then add the product of s raised to the power of 3 with the signal x modulated by coefficient h3. This is the third component of the diffusion sequence, which we now aggregates information from three hop neighbors. To complete the graph convolution, we keep adding components of the diffusion sequence scaled by their respective filter coefficients until we reach the order of the filter. The last entry is the capital K-1 element of the diffusion sequence scaled by coefficient capital K-1. A separate important property of graph convolutions is that the same filter can be executed in multiple different graphs. This is true because the graph filter and the shift operator are separate from each other in the definition of the filter. They have to be designed jointly, of course, but the coefficients hk do not depend on the shift s afterwards. We say that we can transfer the filter across graphs. To illustrate this point, consider a signal supported on a graph, the same one we considered a minute ago. But consider also a different signal supported on a different graph. 
To write the convolutions outputs, we proceed as before. We start with a signal scaled by coefficient h0. This is the same operation on both graphs. We then add the diffusion s times x modulated by coefficient h1. The resulting operations are now different in the different graphs because the graph neighborhoods are different. This is highlighted for node 4 in both graphs. The same is true of element 2. The same notation, namely, the shift s raised to the power of 2 multiplying x and the result scaled by h2 represents different operations when instantiated in different graphs. And the same holds for element 3 of the diffusion sequence. Same abstract operation, different instantiated results. Upon completing the execution of the filter, the convolutions could be quite different because the graphs are different. But it is nevertheless possible to move the filter from one graph to another. This is true no matter how different the graphs are. They can have different neighbors, different weights, different numbers of nodes even. Now I don't want to make too much of a big deal out of this. I am just saying that the output of a graph convolution depends on the filter coefficients and the shift operator s, and that these two can be chosen separately. But the ability to transfer a filter across graphs will prove to be very important to us, in both theory and practice. It is all but impossible to encounter the exact same graph twice. Our theory and practice have to account for that. From their respective definitions, we see that graph convolutions are a linear combination of the elements of the diffusion sequence. The latter, we recall, we can compute with matrix powers or with recursive application of the shift operator. Using the recursive definition of the diffusion sequence, we end up with a shift register structure, which is familiar to those of you that have studied implementation of graph filters. Familiar or not, the shift register is just a visualization of the recursive computation of the diffusion sequence. It is based on interpreting convolutions as a combination of scaling, shifting, and summing. Start with the signal x, which we write as s to the power of 0 times x. This is the shifting. We scale by h0, and we sum towards the output. We now multiply this signal by the shift operator s. This is the shifting. It produces the signal s to the power of 1 times s, element 1 of the diffusion sequence. We scale by h1, and we sum towards the output. We accumulate, if you wish. We multiply by s a second time. This is shifting. It produces entry s2 of the diffusion sequence. The signal s to the power of 2 times x. We scale this by h2, and we sum towards the output. We multiply by s once more, another shift. It produces entry 3 of the diffusion sequence, s to the power of 3 times x. We scale by h3 and sum towards the output. Since this is a filter with four taps, the accumulated sum is the output of the convolutional graph filter. This shift register structure is the one we use in the implementation of graph filters. We shift, we scale, we sample.